hold of this fish. We'll talk a little bit more of what we're doing in a minute because I want to get back out there while the bites. And we just pulled up and hit two in a row. Using some X shads that you got in your last matrix bait box. And we're going to use some smoking shads as we're seeing pogies flick around. That's what we're wanting to do is use our pogie imitation, shad imitation X shads, fishing a rock jetty in Lake Pontchartrain. Another keeper. Not the biggest trout in the world, but nevertheless a keeper. Now we've been talking about pogie imitation baits. Our X shad series has three or four pogie or shad painted style baits. You know, in our last Docs ITV episode, you saw the sexy shad that we were using, catching trout on the shoreline that you got in your last bait box. Now we're using some, uh, this is called the smoking shad. Also the purple pogie is a good one. Great, great pogey shed imitation lures. And as you get into that May, June time frame, pogies is one of the premier sources of food for, for speckled trout, you know, as the brown shrimp start to migrate in. There he is right there. And another thing this time of year, the trout will school up. You know, we still catch some nice trout. Here's a schoolie right here. We still catch some nice trout. Let me get this one. This time of year. That one's not going to make the team, but as you get into the summer more, you get more of those school and size trout, which, uh, you know, you can find them on points, coves, miles of bayous, the rigs, rigs in Lake Bourne. They still got a handful on the trestle, but you're going to notice as the summer progresses, Typically the fish get a little bit smaller, but they get more condensed where you can catch them one after another Like we're doing at this second right here, but Weaving through the weeding through the throwbacks the keepers That's just been part of your Lake Pontchartrain Lake Bourne Fishery ever since they closed the miss ago, but nevertheless, we do catch some nice fish get into some runs of some big ones if we have a nice salty summer but if we have a lot of fresh water like we've had this spring a lot of rain spillway hasn't opened thankfully but a lot of rain pearl's been kind of high that's not really a good combination for big trout so i'm gonna keep working this point we got a real good falling tide the fish are using this point as an ambush spot Let's see if we can put a few more keepers in the box Hopefully this is a keeper. Feels like it. So it's gonna make the team. Oh yeah, I mean look at the difference of quality. Look at the quality of fish, guys. It's just so crazy. Dink, 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 and then this is a solid. That's a almost a three-pound fish. So you never know. And it's about it's probably a solid 19-inch fish, which is a, right under three pounds, two and a half. It's got that smoking shed choke down. I mean, look how beautiful that fish is. That's what you want right there, guys. That's what you want. Oh, he's got it, he's got it choked. But when you're fishing in that late spring, early summer, just finding the fish, that's the key, man. You can't be too picky on looking for big ones only. The small ones and the big ones seem to hang out together a lot this time of year. You just want to find speckled trout. There's a smoking shad. Beautiful paint job. All right, so I was throwing in the, right there where we've been talking about, right up the tip of that jetty. And what we've been noticing as we got a little bit closer is it's a very defined stained water line, meeting a little bit cleaner like Pontchartrain water. We just had a lot of rain. And the tide's falling hard, so you're getting a big eddy line of a, of a color change. And that's, that's always a great place. Fish love that. When you go from like a darker water to a cleaner water. I've seen that a lot with crappie. I've seen it with bass. You can ask the guys down in Venice. They see that all the time with the Mississippi River meeting the Gulf of Mexico. But anyway, I threw up in there, and I just took the freight train that's, got, that's pulling us around here. Trying to get a little bit of control over it now. Probably a nice red. 
probably going to kill our trout bite for a little bit, which is uh, a lot of people. A lot of people can attest to this when you're on a nice trout bite, especially schoolies, and you bump into one of these freight trains, it'll kill that bite. So if you're really adamant on trout, 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 trout only, if you know it's a red, you want to break it immediately because what happens with the big fight, it just disturbs the school. I'm going to go ahead and play it out. We've caught plenty of trout today. I'm not really worried if the bite fizzles too bad. There he is right there. Nice, I don't think he's a slot, but a nice red right here. Yep, beautiful, about a 28 to 30 incher. It's about a 10 pounder, non 10 pounder. That's just part of it. Big reds live with little trout, probably even eat some of those nine and 10 inches quite often, I'm sure. But like I said, if, you, if you're if you worried about ruining your trout bite, don't fight, don't fight those reds and let them get all up in the school. Just break, if he's gonna, if he hits it, runs out away from the school, that's fine. If he hits it, wants to fight and make a run right through your school, break him immediately, retie and get back on your trout. Comes into the net. There we go. We'll go ahead and take a few pictures here. Get this hook out. We'll release this fish. Look, there's the hook right there again on the smoking shed. X shed. Let's get him back in the water real quick. Beautiful red. We're gonna release him right here next to the jetty. Let me get in the back of the boat. Go ahead and let this bad boy go. For you guys to catch. I'll go recapture that big bruiser. Put him on the grill if you want. I already got my little red from earlier today. Another one to make the team, stink the grease. Well, smoking chair is doing damage, but what we have here, so we got a defined rock jetty. It's relatively new, been here for about, I don't know, six, seven, eight years. Uh, it comes out and on a fallen tides, but I really like it. A lot of water pulls down the shoreline of the poncha train and it gets pressed up against this jetty and it has to whip around. So this is a perfect ambush spot for these little schoolies and some nice ones to set up for that May, June run. Great little spot. It's just, this is the time of year we try to start getting away from the bridges. Crowds get real funky and the fish start slowing up on it a little bit. You can typically hit your home runs off the bridges this time of year, trying some other stuff in the Pontchartrain Basin. This is also the time of year I like to start looking at them rigs in Lake Bourne, which I would imagine if we wanted to run out there today, we'd have some success. All right, so this point we're fishing, right behind this buoy here, it's a rock jetty that comes out. And when you fish at rock jetties, just because where you visually see the rocks in, that doesn't always necessarily mean that's exactly what a rock's in. So you got to figure out what out, you know, basically you're going to get snagged a handful of times. That's a fish, not a snag there. But you got to figure out where the end of that jetty is. And that's the sweet spot, right at the end of that jetty. Oh, lost that. Right at the end of that jetty is where you want to be chunking it. Um, that's where that current's going to be at the sweetest little angle that's where the fish are usually going to use the rock jetty to hide behind and then as bait fish like pogies is what we're trying to imitate here shad when they come sweeping around that jetty with a hard falling tide like we have today that's uh it's just perfect they can hide behind the current stay relaxed the bait gets pushed around and they can ambush it from a sneaky little spot and Trying to find that, you know, where that jetty ends, whether you're fishing 
the Mr. Go Long Rocks or Southwest Pass, South Pass, stuff like that down in Venice. Uh, I'm sure they got plenty of jetties. Just about every estuary has rock jetties. It's a very common thing. Fish love them. They create current breaks. The rocks create algae, barnacles, stuff to grow on. The little fin fish eat on that, or bacteria, and the fin fish eat on that. And then the big fish want to eat the fin fish. Rocks are always a good place to target, you know, uh, when you're fishing. What you really want is shallow water meeting deeper water with a rock jetty. If it's just pure shallow, like two feet, a lot of times that might not be too effective. But when you have deep water near a rock jetty where they can go from three to five feet in an ambush spot and then the water plummets off to seven, eight, 10, 20 feet, that's when you have something cooking and that's what you want to be looking for. And we're just simply doing your basic punch train pop. Most of these bites are setting in about seven to eight foot of water. So seven to eight foot, you can use a quarter ounce, five sixteenths, three eighths. Those are your three choices that I would recommend on your jig head size. And that way you get it down in the bottom and you can bump, 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 pause. Some of these fish are hitting us on the rail end, which tells me a, a slow suspended jerk bait would also work. Um, if, I, if I'm still here, when the current goes to relax, I would probably throw that. I don't really care for a jerk bait when the current's at a high velocity like it is at this very second. But when you catch that tide changing, it can make a big difference. And um, it's just, uh, the jetties is where the fish are really gonna school up. But when you are fishing rock jetties like this and you're on a bunch of 12 to 16 inches, maybe early in the morning, get away from the jetty and go down the rocks itself, looking for some solitude fish, maybe with a top water or something, and you can find one of those bigger ones lurking by themselves. A lot of times those real trophies, those four, five, six, seven pounders, they don't like to be hanging out with the 10 to 14 inches too often. But you never know, it's fishing. I've seen some crazy stuff. Today, that's a good one. Today we've caught some up to 18 inches mixed in with a nine or 10 inch. Look at this fish here, pretty good fish. This is about what we're tapping out on right here. That's a solid, about a 17 incher. And that's what we're really looking for, hitting that smoking shad, matrix shad, matrix X shad. These are hand painted, really awesome. These are my favorite baits nowadays, but I usually only break these out for these freckled fellas. These are a little bit more expensive usually go with the matrix and vortex when it's reds with the speckle bellies they get the special treatment all right we starting to get them on a roll here we're gonna go ahead and try to fill up the box a little bit but i hope you enjoyed this episode using some matrix x shad and the pogey style colors. He's got this one choked down pretty good. There we go. That's the smoking shad. We also been using the purple pogey. Started off with the sexy shad that you got in your last month's bait box. Subscribe to this month's bait box and get these color imitations of the shad on the X shad and this month's bait box. Make sure to subscribe to that. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out all of our Dockside TV episodes. I hope you enjoyed. This one fishing rock jetty points and Lake Pontchartrain. And right, right before we get into the heat of the summer. Until next time, good fishing.